Hello everybody, this is John Wood and welcome back to Jay Wood Fly Fishing. And I'm going to do another video for you today. This one is a fly that I call the Graveyard Betis. And it's based on several different flies. Uh, one being John Barr's Barzy Merger. And uh, that's the overall shape, but I've changed it up quite a bit. And the other fly that this is uh, kind of modeled after is my own um, Graveyard Midge which has become extremely popular south of here at Fort Smith on the Bighorn River. And it's been really, really successful in a lot of other rivers. Uh, a couple years ago, I started fishing this on the Bighorn, and it's uh, become my go-to pattern for any time that betas are active. This version I'm going to do for you today is the olive. And... The other version that I like a lot for the general betas hatches down there is a um, gray version, which the only thing that changes is the color of the tail and the color of the thread, and I'll be doing a short video on that, which will just tie right through it. And then the, the PMD version, which is completely different, and I'll be doing a video on that. Now, one thing that's unique about this fly is that it is tied on a size 14 hook, but the body is sized to be an 18 fly. Now the reason I did that is because fishing on the bighorn, you get a lot of big trout and they're in that heavy current. You know, a, a low flow on the bighorn is around 2000 CFS. And when you're nymphing these fish out of those seams, it, it's a really heavy current. And um, the smaller flies, the smaller hook sizes, tend to pull loose on those big fish. And so you're not losing little fish, you're losing the big fish, the ones you really want to get to the net. So I've, I'm using a 2457. Now it inherently has a 2X short shank. So when I tie it on a 14, if I don't go around the bend, like I've stopped at the back of the shank here, I've got a size 18 fly silhouette. And, but I've got a gap, because this has a 2X gap, I've actually got a gap of about a size 10 or 12, if you were to compare it to a uh, standard dry fly hook. Now, before we get started, I want to talk to you about a couple of the materials that are on here. Three, actually. Number one, the graveyard foam. And this is the foam that I use for the back and the wing on this, and the back and the breathers on the graveyard midge. And it comes in a 6x9 sheet like this. And I sell this on my website, two sheets for $275. And if you want to know how I cut it up to get these little strips, check out my video, Graveyard Foam, in uh, Fly Tying Tips and Trick, or Techniques and Tips. And uh, there's a short little video on there on how I cut that up. Now the other material that I want to talk about that a lot of people are not familiar with is this Cascade Crest. CCT fibers and the CCT stands for Cascade Crest Tools. That is the company that manufactures and uh, sells it. Uh, a lot of other suppliers carry it also. This material is awesome. It's very inexpensive. This hank has been uh, cut on a little bit, but an entire hank like this is three bucks. And you can get a lot of flies out of it, especially if you're tying these little flies. Another thing I like about this material as opposed to, say, EP fibers or um, uh, widow's web is that it comes in these little bundles and they're, the bulk matches about what uh, an Antron fiber on cards is. And so to use this for this particular fly, what I'm going to do is cut one of these little bundles get my big mitt out of the way, cut that bundle off of the hank, and then I've got another one here. There's a binding wrap around this 
that keeps it, uh, that's what keeps the, all those fibers from getting tangled up together. And I've taken a little brush, which is just a um, grout brush. You can get that at any home improvement store. And I've brushed that binding wrap off. Now I'm going to take my bodkin and split this bundle in half. So now I've got two smaller bundles and you don't have to worry about getting them exactly the same because I'll use the bigger ones for the bigger flies and the ones that come out slightly smaller with fewer fibers, I'll use those for the smaller flies. Now once I get that split, I'm just going to take, use a little moisture off of my sponge cloth and tie a knot in the end of this group of fibers. That's a little further from the end than I normally get it, but that's okay. Now I'm just going to trim that down. And then I'll take these again with a little moisture off of my sponge cloth and get them all kind of gathered with that moisture. Pull that down and you see the ends are uneven. I'm going to go ahead and clip those ends. And I'll do the same thing with the other half of the bundle. Now this bundle came out considerably thicker than the other bundle. So I'll use that for my 20s and 22s which are tied on 16 and 18 hooks. There's my knot. And then again, a little moisture. It really helps to control these things, especially if you're in a dry climate like I am, where we have a lot of uh, static. These don't static too bad, but they do get some, and uh, it just makes it a little more difficult to handle. So now I've got that prepped and ready to go. And the third material is this ribbing, and this is something that uh, you may or may not be familiar with. This is something that I sell on my website. I call it Ultra Rib, and it's the same material as Hairline Dubbin sales as um, Midge Stretch Rib. And this is a half millimeter in uh, diameter, and it comes in a three and a half foot section. And you're thinking, well, that's not very much material, but when you take this and you stretch it, it stretches about 300%, maybe four. And it's really, really tough. It's extremely durable, especially when you get it wrapped around that fly. It will not break. And we'll talk a little bit more about it as we use it. I want to go ahead and get started and get my hook in there if I can pick it up. And I'm going to start with the hook at um, an angle where the eye is pointing downward. And that gives it makes it a little bit easier to get the tail material loaded on there. And I'm using, like I said, this one is olive, and this is a 70 UTC thread, 70 denier. And you see where I'm bringing that to. At that angle, I want that to hang about where the point of the hook is. And then I'm just using, um, this is inexpensive rooster hackle. And you can see it's got pretty long barbs. I'm going to strip those thin webby barbs off the bottom and you see I'm about that far off. Now I'm going to brush those out perpendicular to the stem and Get a group of barbs, and you want this tail to be pretty substantial in silhouette. So I'm taking, you can see quite a few barbs there. Strip those right off of the, the stem. 
and I've got them kind of lined up but I do not want these completely lined up um, when I'm having to use that mini I want the end of the tail to be a little bit scraggly and what that's going to imitate because this is a merger is the shuck and the tail and I'm going to make it long I want it the length of the entire hook not counting the eye of the hook so I want it to be from the back of the hook or the back of the eye to the rear of the bend of the hook and I want it even a little bit longer than that so I'm going to pull it back now I've got it locked down where I stop my thread and then I'm just going to wrap forward and you notice when I'm coming around I'm releasing pressure as I go over and then tightening as I come back towards myself and what that does is it keeps me from doing this right here if I have pressure on the thread as it goes around it walks those barbs off the top of the hook and I do not want that I want them right up on top of the shank because we're going to put the rib on the back side and there's a specific reason for that now I've wrapped that up to about one and a half hook eye lengths behind the eye of the hook and I'm going to set that hook reset it to where now the shank is pointing slightly upwards and this is where we put in our rib I'm going to open up my thread a little bit so I've got a wider bite and I do that by spinning it counterclockwise and you want to get this ribbing right at the end and sometimes it works a little better than others there we go got it right there get it really really tight stretch it just a little bit don't stretch it completely yet until you've got three or four really solid wraps and then you want to stretch it and you see how thin that's getting compared to how thick it was when I tied it on and then we just wrap wrap all the way back to where I ended the thread base and attach the tail and now I'm going to take one two wraps and you see how the tail dipped down a little bit that tells you that you're in the right spot I'll go one more right over the top of that last wrap and then I'm going to start forward and wrap all the way forward to where I started the rib now I like to turn this up upside down to do the ribbing for almost all of my flies and especially this one and this is why we put the stretch rib on the back side on this because I don't want to disturb the tail I don't want to push it around so I'm going to flip that upside down and go ahead and wrap my rib now you can see the great segmentation that that created and the sheen that it creates and you'll be able to see also that when you stretch that ultra rib it becomes translucent very much translucent now I've got it locked down by going in front and behind with alternating thread wraps and that kind of clamps it in place stretch that as much as possible and then clip it and then I like to give it a couple more wraps real quick to make sure it's not going anywhere and then bring my thread just forward of the rib now I'm going to take my uh, graveyard foam find the right strip there and you'll see the side that has the grid on it again see my uh, video graveyard foam or preparing graveyard foam uh, in tips and techniques and I'm going to use the side that has the grid against the hook shank and just get it started there and wrap it back to what's going to be the back of the thorax and then wrap the thread back forward to right behind the eye of the hook Ooh, sorry about that now I want to get this uh, CCT fibers contained 
And one more time, check the end, make sure the ends are very even. These are. And make one loose wrap right there, right behind the eye of the hook, and pull these back to where they're about the length of the eye of the hook, maybe just a hair longer. And you can just give that one last little clip to even up. There were a couple that were a little bit longer. And now I'm going to spiral wrap three wraps back and then one over that last wrap. Pull this up, release, pulling up my bobbin, release the pressure, and then pull my fibers back to where they're all behind the eye of the hook. And then bind them down very securely. Go all the way back to behind the eye of the hook and then come back to about the center of the thorax. Now I'm going to apply our thorax which is UV dark olive ice dub. And I, I apply this in a really thin noodle because um, I want to be able to control where I build the bulk on this thorax. And if you get it just right, you'll be able to build a tapered thorax where it's more bulbous towards the rear and tapered off towards the eye of the hook. And this stuff is a little can be a little cantankerous to get applied to your thread. Just keep working with it. Use moisture. Uh, don't use wax on this because it dulls the refractive property that we're trying to get. We want this to catch a lot of light and reflect it out. So now I'm going to just wrap that back so the rear of the thorax come over that. And you see I'm building it a little towards the back and then tapering it towards the front. And, and that is a fairly bulbous thorax, especially for a betis, but we're imitating an emerger, not a nymph. Now for the legs, I'm going to pull the CCT fiber over and take one wrap right behind the eye of the hook and then rotate my jaws upside down. To split the legs, I just gently lift the CCT fibers up and press them against the eye of the hook. And you'll see, I'll turn that in just a second so you can see it, that they split very evenly. You might have to coax a few of them from one side to the other now and then, but you see we've got a good split. Now I'm going to keep that pressure right behind the eye of the hook. And I hope this works with me not looking at it. And just keep wrapping that to the front of the thorax. I'm going to check that real quick. Yes, they're still separated. Now I'm going to take my thumbnail, get in there, and just rock that back and forth just a hair. And it opens them up even more. So they're going to be in a really good position when we get ready to trim them. Now I've taken one more wrap right in front of the thorax and I'm going to wrap my thread now right to behind the eye of the hook again. Fold my foam over and catch that in there nice and snug right behind the eye of the hook. You can see when I put the pressure on that it dropped it right to behind the eye. And now I'm going to loop over to right in front of the thorax again. Pull my legs back one more time. And you can see it's created a little bubble in the foam right there. And that's going to help us control what happens next when we build the head. Fold that back. Again, we have the bubble between the thread and the eye of the hook. And now I'm just going to cover that. And you can see that that kept my thread from sliding off the front of the hook. And there's a teeny, teeny, tiny little bubble of foam right there in front. Now I've got the head. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish the fly and I start at the thorax, make a few wraps, 
work forward just a hair and then come back again with that. And I'll do that uh, seven, eight, maybe even nine or ten wraps with my whip finish. Pull that back and you can see we've got a nice bulbous, slightly tapered head. Now I'm going to take my graveyard foam, pull it back just a hair, put my scissors right at the back of the thorax and clip. And that right there is an ode to the RS2 fly. Um, that little wing, when I started putting on that on there, made a really big difference in how successfully this fly fished. So, now I want to cut my legs, but I want to make sure they're on either side, and it's really easy to do. Just pull them upwards, and that will separate your wing, your legs on either side of the head and thorax, and then come in here and about halfway, just cut them, and you'll see the, wing, the uh, legs open up. And there you have it. That is the BWO version of the Graveyard Betas. Again, there are two others. I'll do some short videos on those, and you'll have the whole set at your disposal. Check the uh, recipe for all the materials. Thanks for watching. Hope you come back again. Until then, peace, love, and fly fishing, my friends.